Hi, I'm Martin Nielsen, parasitologist here at the University of Kentucky Gluck Equine Research Center, and I'm here to report to you the results of a new study. We have documented for the first time in North America uh, macrocyclic lactone resistant small strongyle parasites. So what's the whole story here? So if we look at the traditional charts and what we have re been reporting up until now is that we have three drug classes for treatment of equine small strongyle cyathostomin parasites. Uh, we have been presenting this table over and over again. We've been repeating the message that we have resistance to two out of three drug classes. So we have the benzimidazoles, we have the pyrimidines, the parentel products, and that's where we've seen the widespread resistance around the world. We have raised concerns about developing or signs of emerging resistance to the third class, the most widely used drug class, uh, macrocyclic lactones. That's where we have ivermectin and moxidectin products. Um, Despite that, we've seen very few cases reported of resistance and none from North America. And amongst those reporting, reported cases, it's usually uh, been small groups of horses, relatively so, and only single uh, data point estimates. So no confirmation of the suspect resistance by going back and retreating the same horses or retreating that population with various representatives of drugs from that same drug family. Uh, so what I'll be presenting to you today uh, are the results of a case on a farm here in central Kentucky. So if we look at this flow chart, so this is the uh, basically the, the, the flow of events uh, and, and how this happened. So we have been working with this farm for multiple years. They adopt all of our recommendations where it comes to uh, testing, and not just getting your fecal egg counts done, but more, more importantly, they routinely evaluate the treatment efficacy of every single time they treat their animals. And this is really why they were able to document this before anyone else. So they also follow our recommendations as to which dewormers to use against which parasites at which time. Uh, so we follow these horses for over eight months uh, in conjunction with the staff and the managers at this farm. Uh, and we were able to test these horses multiple times and get very, very solid data on the performance of these dewormers against cyathostome parasites on this farm. What's unusual with this farm is that they have two populations of foals and slash yearlings every year. They have their own homebred ones uh, born here on the farm in Kentucky born and raised, but they also every year import a uh, contingency of weanlings, yearlings from Ireland. And, and we have, have documented all over the years, we've followed the treatment efficacy and have not really seen any issues um, up until now. So the groups were relatively large. We had over 50 individual horses in each group. So we have very, very solid data here. Um, so. If we look at the uh, sequence of events, we basically uh, did the usual, uh, the farm manager would send me the fecal egg count reduction test results. I would look them over and I would say, looks good, carry on and let's stick to the protocol. So if we look at the US bred yearlings from results from this year, 2020, uh, in February, they were dewormed with ivermectin and the results came back 100% reduction. So that's when these bars go all the way to the top of the graph. And, and so, you know, business as usual, that's what we've seen. The egg count reduced to zero. Uh, and we uh, repeated that treatment later in the year in June and essentially found the same results, 100% reduction. So that was nothing unusual. And now when looking at the results from the Irish born yearlings and imported to the US, the results were very different. So looking at the February results, it was one of those moments where, you know, I get the email, I look at the data and I'm like, what? And, and that's exactly how I reacted here. So all of a sudden uh, we have them divided into these three different groups, all yearlings from Ireland, now in the US. 
They're completely separated from the other groups. There's no overlap. They're on separate paddocks and pastures and barns, actually even on a separate property. Uh, and here, the results were not 100% reduction, actually in any of the three groups. And my immediate reaction was, this can't be right. This hasn't been shown really uh, from anywhere in, in the world. So I got a hold of the farm manager, we talked about it, and I said, you gotta go back and confirm this result. Can you please retreat these animals with the exact same product? And, and so they did. So we were able to do that with two of the groups, and you get the results here. They were even worse. Actually, so uh, the reduction went down to 30 or so percent reduction for both of these groups. At the same time, I remind you, the U.S. bred yearlings were deworm with the exact same product, and uh, they were weighed with an electronic scale, everything was dosed correctly, and they had a 100% reduction. So this clearly indicates that this cannot be due to administration error, uh, inappropriate stored conditions, expired product, or all of these other things you have to rule out. We simply had evidence of reduced efficacy and confirmed by retesting. Now, if you look at the June results, so they again were treated at the same time as the US bred yearlings were, where we, where we still had 100% reduction. The Irish bred ones, not so much. One was doing okay, but the two other groups still had reduced efficacy. So, not alone did we document and confirm resistance of these cyathostomy parasites to ivermectin, the most widely used dewormer drug in history uh, of the horse. We also tested moxidectin. So moxidectin is the other available macrocyclic lactone that's labeled for use in horses. We wanted to test moxidectin because it is more lipophilic. It also is administered at actually a higher concentration at a higher dose. If you look it up, the dose of moxidectin is double that of ivermectin. So in ruminants, sheep, and goats particularly, the observation has been that whenever resistance started developing in strongulate parasites to ivermectin, moxidectin would still perform uh, somewhat better, sometimes without signs of resistance, at least for a while. So we wanted to evaluate if that was also the case here. Would we see a better performance of moxidectin compared to ivermectin? The answer was clear. It was a big no. Here are the results for moxidectin treatment now in green. And we had the exact same figures relatively to ivermectin. So moxidectin didn't do anything better and is not a viable alternative. So uh, what can we learn from this case? Well, first of all, macrocyclic lactone resistance in small strongyl parasites, cyathostomy parasites, it's here, it has happened, and it is not just on this farm. I can guarantee you that the only reason why it was discovered and documented on this farm was due to the management on the farm being so meticulous with their surveillance and their testing and having protocols in place for evaluating deworm or efficacy. If others were to adopt similar uh, protocols, I can guarantee that they would find similar findings, not necessarily on every, every farm, but given the international movement of horses, nationally, internationally, locally, regionally, uh, these things are always more widespread than they appear at first, simply because wherever a horse travels, it also brings its parasites with it. And this case is a perfect illustration of that because this resistance was actually imported from another country, actually from another continent. Uh, so these horses came from Ireland. And the U.S. bred horses did not demonstrate any signs of drug resistance parasites uh, throughout this study. So if this could be imported from Ireland to the U.S., I urge you out there, managers, owners, and veterinarians alike, to start looking around. And I can guarantee you, you will find uh, resistance in small strong jaws to this last so far effective drug class, the macrocyclic lactones. This is concerning because we don't have anything 
new up the pipeline. We don't have a new class of dewormer with a new mode of action just ready to be released to replace these uh, failing dewormer drug classes. Uh, we haven't seen anything new for horses since ivermectin was introduced in the early 1980s that we're approaching a 40-year anniversary. It is about time, so if anybody from the pharmaceutical industry is watching, by all means, here is your encouragement. There is a market awaiting. If you can come up with something new that could be useful, that will be warmly welcomed. And so um, I think I'll leave you with that. Resistance is here, and you better start looking. Because otherwise, if you don't evaluate the dewormer efficacy, you'll never know until it may be too late. And then you'll end up with something potentially where nothing works. And that's the scenario that we want to avoid. With that, I thank you for your attention. Uh, there will be a link to the full paper. The paper will be an open access available, so no payment wall or anything like that. You can click on the link, go on there, and read the entire paper and see all the data. So thank you for your attention. and. Uh, I'll be back with updates as this uh, situation unravels.